Welcome. This training is designed to teach you how to recognize and control life-threatening bleeding and how to use select supplies in case you encounter an active assailant. Your hospital has either a large or several small life-threatening bleeding control kits. This training will teach you how to use these supplies. Nicholas Gaddy. I'm a team lead here at Free State Gun Range. I'm also a combat medic in the Army and I have eight years of experience. So today what we're going to do is we're going to go over the active assailant bag and go through each compartment. First we're going to go over compartment four of the bag. Compartment four contains five door wedges. The door wedges are used for any of the doors in the room in order to jam under there and secure that door. You can use it on multiple doors within the room or you can also double up to keep that door a little more secure. Next in the bag is the 550 cord. 550 cord is used for double doors with handles. On those, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a figure eight pattern in between the handles and secure that up. The next thing is duct tape. The duct tape is used for one of the self-closing doors with the metal arms at the top. All you're gonna do is take the duct tape and wrap it around tightly on that arm and it's gonna prevent the door from opening. The last thing in this compartment are chem lights. These five chem lights are used to mark any location and clear exits within the room. Compartment three contains two flashlights. One flashlight already has batteries in it. And we also have a spare pack of batteries for the secondary flashlight in there. It also contains two rolls of medical tape and then one Sharpie. Sharpie is used to just mark the tourniquet. Compartment two is pretty simple. It contains only one small kit. Compartment one contains three separate compartments. In the main compartment, we have one small kit, the polis litter, which is just used for transporting patients, and then two CPR masks in hard cases. In the back of that, we have a small compartment here. Within this, you have two emergency blankets. These are used to help to prevent shock. The last thing you have in here is a pair of shears. The last part of compartment one is the mesh pouch. Within the mesh pouch, you have two NPAs, nasopharyngeal airways. You also have two OPAs, oropharyngeal airways, and you also have three hyphen chest seals. Now, to choose the proper airway device that you're gonna use, just know that the NPA can be used on a conscious or unconscious patient. The OPA should only be used on an unconscious patient. Reason for that is a lot of people have gag reflexes and if you gave this to a conscious patient, there's a chance they might vomit. Now we're gonna go over the small kit. All the small kits have a label on the outside that lists all the contents within there. It also has an expiration date on the bottom. This is the earliest date for the contents within the bag. 
The bags also contain perforations on either side for easy access. The bags are also sealed just for accountability of what is in here. The contents of the small kit all have their own purpose. Now, a way to choose them is to know what they're used for. So the tourniquet is used for major hemorrhaging on extremities. The hyphen chest seal is an occlusive dressing that can be used on any thoracic trauma or neck traumas. Quick clot is a Z-fold gauze that is impregnated with a hemostatic agent. It also has a blue line that runs down the center that makes it easily detectable by x-rays. This is going to be used for any deep wound channels on the extremities, the axillary area, which is the armpit, or the inguinal areas, which would be around the groin. The 4-inch emergency trauma dressing can be used as a pressure dressing on any wound smaller than about 4 inches. You can also use this in conjunction with the quick clot gauze in order to secure the quick clot in place after you've already pushed it into the wound. Next, 6 inch trauma dressing for the abdominal area. This contains a 12 by 12 fold out pad. It can also be used for larger wounds that are not covered by the 4 inch emergency trauma dressing. Next, the 8 inch by 10 inch abdominal pad. This can be used on its own, just using the medical tape that is contained within the large bag, or it can be used in conjunction with the 6 inch emergency trauma dressing. Also included in the small kit, there's one pack of five pair of gloves, a pair of trauma shears, and a CPR mask and a hard case. Severe bleeding can result from a wide variety of causes, including accidents or intentional harm, and in a wide variety of locations, such as your home or workplace. There is a new national program to control bleeding known as Stop the Bleed. This training incorporates many of those core principles into this session. No one expects to encounter a bleeding emergency, but in case you do, it is important that you have the knowledge and supplies to make a difference. Uncontrolled bleeding is a leading cause of preventable death from trauma. The greater the number of people who know how to control bleeding in an injured patient, the greater the chances of surviving that injury. You can help save a life by knowing how to stop bleeding if someone, including yourself, is injured. In this training, you will learn the various ways to control bleeding, whether you only have your two hands to use or whether you have bleeding control supplies. Why do you need this training? Everyday emergencies happen, so you need to be prepared. You don't need to be a doctor, nurse, paramedic, or EMT to stop bleeding and save a life. If you have medical training, it's important to know what to do first. Life-threatening bleeding can occur from home injuries, motor vehicle crashes, work-related injuries, intentional attacks, and natural disasters. When a patient is severely bleeding, time is critical. The fate of the wounded lies in the hands of those who apply the first dressing. A person can bleed to death in as little as three minutes before a medical person arrives on the scene. Help offered by bystanders can and will make the difference between life and death. Keep yourself safe before you offer any help. If you become injured, you will not be able to help anyone. Provide care only if the scene is safe for you to do so. Protect yourself from bloodborne pathogens by wearing gloves. If at any time your safety is threatened, attempt to remove yourself and the victim if possible from danger and find a safe location. Life-threatening bleeding can be difficult to describe as it may present in several ways. All the examples on this slide are descriptions of life-threatening bleeding. ABCs of bleeding control. Alert, direct someone to call 911 or call yourself. Bleeding, find the bleeding. Compress, apply pressure. Call for help. Call 911 yourself or tell someone to call 911. Be sure to tell the 911 operator where the victim is located. This will notify emergency medical responders and depending on the situation, police officers to respond to the scene. Find the source of bleeding. Open or remove the clothing over the wound so you can clearly see the wound. Look for and identify life-threatening bleeding. Apply pressure to stop the bleeding by covering the wound with a clean cloth and applying pressure by pushing directly on the wound with both hands. For life-threatening bleeding from an arm or a leg, apply a tourniquet. If a tourniquet is not available or for bleeding from the neck, shoulder, or groin, 
pack the wound with the bleeding control gauze, hemostatic dressing, or a clean cloth and then apply pressure with both hands. Take the pressure dressing or any clean cloth and cover the wound. If the wound is large and deep, try to stuff the cloth down into the wound. Apply continuous pressure with both hands directly on top of the bleeding wound. Push down as hard as you can. Hold pressure to stop the bleeding. If no pressure dressing was used, continue pressure until relieved by a medical responder. Six and four inch ETD. The six inch is for the abdominal wounds and has a 12 inch pad that folds out. The four inch is for smaller wounds on the extremities that require pressure dressing. Application for both are the same. Open the emergency trauma dressing at perforated red tabs. Remove the dressing from the package. Find the end of the roll and expose the pad. Place the sterile pad onto the abdominal wound, ensuring it is completely covered by the pad. Wrap the elastic bandage around the abdomen, ensuring the first two wraps cover the outer edge of the white pad. Continue your wrap pulling tight and applying more pressure as you do so. Finally, when you come to the end, secure those plastic hooks to the actual bandage. Severe bleeding from wounds to the arms or legs can be controlled by direct pressure or application of a tourniquet. There are two types of tourniquets. The cat tourniquet has Velcro, which allows the strap to maintain pressure. The soft tourniquet has a metal D-ring that maintains the pressure. Both are easy to apply and the application is very similar regardless of location of the bleeding. Tourniquets come put together so you can slide it over an arm. For a leg wound, you may need to undo the band of the tourniquet and rotate the band around the leg instead of sliding it in place. Pull the band very tight and then securely fasten the band. The pulse below the tourniquet should be eliminated. Tourniquets hurt when applied effectively. You should explain this to the victim. Pain does not indicate a mistake in the application and pain does not mean you should take the tourniquet off. The time is noted to alert medical professionals as to when the tourniquet was placed. You do not need to remove all the victim's clothing, just expose the wound. If bleeding is not controlled by applying one tourniquet, you can apply a second tourniquet above the first tourniquet, closer to the victim's torso. Do not apply tourniquets directly over a knee or elbow. Do not apply a tourniquet over a clothing pocket that contains bulky items. Tourniquets should be removed only by doctors in a hospital. Cat tourniquets come in three colors. Black or orange are used on victims. Blue is a training tourniquet. Training tourniquets should never be used during real emergencies. Repetitive use of a tourniquet may cause the tourniquet to fail. Common tourniquet mistakes. Not using a tourniquet when life-threatening bleeding exists. Waiting too long to apply a tourniquet. Using a tourniquet for minor bleeding. Not applying the strap tight enough prior to spinning the windlass. Taking the tourniquet off when the victim complains of pain. Not making the tourniquet tight enough to stop the bleeding. And not using a second tourniquet if needed. Remove the tourniquet from the package. Pull apart the tourniquet, ensuring you have a loop. Place tourniquet over extremity, ensuring excess strap faces outwards from the patient and the tourniquet is placed two to three inches over the wound or two to three inches over the joint. Secure excess strap with Velcro after ensuring the tourniquet is as tight as possible. Twist windlass until the bleeding stops. Place windlass and windlass catch 
and Velcro gray strap over top, securing the windlass in place. Note time on the gray strap. Remove the tourniquet from the package and rubber bands. Unfold the tourniquet. Ensure the D-ring is in place. Pull nylon strap to open tourniquet as needed. Place tourniquet over extremity, ensuring tourniquet is two to three inches above the wound or two to three inches above the joint. The excess strap should face outwards from the victim's body. Pull excess strap to secure tourniquet as tight as possible. Twist the windlass until bleeding has stopped. Secure windlass in place with triangle shaped buckle. Note the time on the strap that the tourniquet was applied. Junctional bleeding refers to any hemorrhage in the groin, buttocks, perineum, axilla, and the base of the neck, the areas where the arms and limbs join the torso. Hemorrhage from these areas cannot be controlled by the application of a standard tourniquet. For life-threatening bleeding from the neck, shoulder, or groin, open the clothing over the bleeding wound. Wipe away any pooled blood. Pack the wound with bleeding control gauze, also called hemostatic gauze, plain gauze, or a clean cloth and then apply pressure with both hands. Don't release the pressure to check the wound. Hold direct pressure for three minutes if using a hemostatic dressing and 10 minutes if using plain gauze. If the bleeding is stopped, you can secure the packing with any type of compression bandage or roll of gauze. Victims who have a tourniquet or hemostatic dressing in place should be transported to a hospital first. This diagram demonstrates the importance of packing the wound by filling the defect or hole in the tissue with gauze, as opposed to placing gauze on top of the wound, which can allow for the bleeding to continue without pressure being applied to the source of the bleeding. Open the package and remove the gauze. Pack gauze deep into the wound directly over the bleeding source. More than one gauze pad may be required. Apply pressure for three minutes or until the bleeding stops. Any injuries to the chest and abdomen may cause severe bleeding inside the body. These injuries cannot be managed outside of an emergency department with a tourniquet or with hemostatic gauze. It is important to recognize these injuries and transport the victim as soon as possible to an emergency department, ideally a trauma center. Examples of penetrating chest wounds are gunshot wounds, knife wounds, stabbings, and other puncture wounds. The hyphen-vented chest seal prevents airflow into the chest cavity but allows built up air to escape, helping to prevent a tension pneumothorax. A vented chest seal dressing is used for the treatment and management of an open chest wound caused by penetrating trauma. The three channels also allow blood to escape and also provide a backup failsafe system. As even if two or three of the channels become obstructed, the vent will remain fully operational. The seal has a transparent backing to allow placement directly over a wound and easily conforms to the patient's chest. 
tear open package at perforated edges and remove chest seal. Use gauze provided to wipe away excess dirt and blood. Grip red tab to peel clear liner from dressing. Place dressing on the victim, adhesive side down, centered over the wound. Seal the dressing on exhale. Evaluate patient for exit wound. If exit wound is present, apply a second chest seal. Just note that this entire demonstration obviously was conducted on a mannequin in a controlled environment for us and it was slow in order to teach how these interventions are supposed to be conducted. Uh, note that in this situation that this bag would be used in, in real life, your patients are not going to be calm, they're not going to lay still. Uh, there are chances they may be calm and they might be in shock, but most likely chances people are going to be panicking and when you're doing these interventions, some of these interventions are going to cause what seems like an extreme amount of pain, but in the end, it's going to save their life. So just remember that, keep that in mind that this was very controlled and this was on a mannequin that didn't move but when you actually have to use this bag that is when it gets real and it is a very uncontrolled environment something that you're going to have to keep calm and make sure that everything you do is done correctly thank you for your time and hopefully this video helped you and you learned something today and remember barricade sustain and survive